Walk up here in the name of the Lord and trust in Him. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. You know, Aunt Angie, or Sister Angie, said uh, that she'll never stop loving her children. No matter what they do, she said, God is our Heavenly Father. Yes. Brother Glenn said it nine or ten times, God help us. God help us. Yes. I'll ask you a question. Dude. How many has kids in here? Yes. Amen. If your child called you and said, Dad, Mom, I need help. Yes. I need help right now. And you told him I would be there. I'm going to be there to help you. Yes. How would you feel if your child looked at you and said, I need proof. Yes. I need proof that you're going to keep your word. Amen. I need a sign that you're going to keep your word and you're going to be there for me. Yes. You know, the Bible said he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. He's still acquainted with grief today from our lack of faith in him. Yes. He said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stone them that I send unto thee. How often when I gathered your children under my wings, as a chicken gathers her hand, but you would not. Yes. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me, believe in the word of God. That's what we yes. have to believe in. Yes. Amen. He said, it came into his own, and his own received him not. Yes. Don't you believe that our God is hurt from our unbelief? Yes. Our lack of faith in his yes. word. Yes. His promises that he gives us, they're yea. We don't need to doubt. Yes. Yes. What does it take for us to believe in God? Yes. Do we have to see something? Do we have to feel something? Come on. Our God is invisible. He wants us to believe in something that is invisible. Right. Not in something that we can hold with our hands mm -hmm. or see with our eyes. Yes. Is there anybody in here that can read loud and that can help me read today? Brother Johnny, I know you can read loud. Brother Kurt, I know you can read loud. Brother Glenn, I know you can read loud. Will you help me read? We'll help. We'll help. He gave us his word to believe in. Yes, and that's, that's true faith when we can believe in his word. Yeah. And not have to see a sign. I want to see miracles. I want to see God move. Yes. But he said it can't work where there's unbelief. We have to believe in his word for God, for us to see him move in our life. Amen. Can you go to 1 Timothy 1? I'm a mess up here. You guys just pray for me. Timothy 1 and 17. Brother Glenn, can you read that? Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. He said to the King eternal, God is our King. Did it say he was invisible? Yes, he did. Yeah. God is invisible. He is our King. Yes. yes. Can you go to 1 Samuel 8 and verse 5?
the Israelites uh, got tired of having a king that they couldn't see. They wanted something that they could see with their eyes. Yeah. Starting at verse 5. Go ahead, brother. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Can you read through 7? But the thing displeased Samuel, and they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. They rejected an invisible king. Mm -hmm. yes. They wanted something they could see. That's right. You know, John 4, 24 says God is a spirit. Yes. God is a spirit. Yes. Can you go to Colossians 1 and 15? Colossians 1, 15. talking about the Lord when he walked the earth. Good, Brother Kirk. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Our Lord was the image of the invisible God when he walked this earth. That was the way that he walked while he was here. Uh -huh. That flesh profited, it didn't profit nothing, it's the spirit that quickened it. Yes. He knew that he was going to come down in the flesh and he was going to leave and go back to the spirit. Uh -huh. He didn't want people to get used to something that they can see. He's a God that wants to be worshipped by the true worshippers in spirit and in truth. An invisible God. Okay, can you go to John 13? It's easy to trust in a hundred dollar bill. It's easy to trust in a brand new car or truck. Yeah. You know, but it's all vanity. Yeah. You get that excitement from a brand new truck. You get excitement from a paycheck. But within days, that excitement is gone. Yeah. You're laying on your bed after buying a new automobile and you're thinking, what can I do with this thing to? It's, it's, it's a nice car, a nice truck. But within a week, that excitement is gone. Yeah. It's vanity. If you take a vacation, you pay for it two months in advance. That excitement to go on that vacation. You're waiting for it for two months. You just have that excitement. There's nothing wrong with any of these, I promise you that. I do it myself. But that excitement for that vacation is gone the week you get back. Yeah. It's uh -huh. gone, it's vanity. Yes. When you're fasting for one, two, three days, you're hungry. That's all you can think about is food after a few days. You're coming up on your hour where you can eat. You're thinking about food. But as soon as you eat that food, 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, you can't think about food. That's right. It's vanity. All in this earth is vanity. <laughs> yeah. Did we say John? Chapter 13, 3. Verse. verse 3. 13 and verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things unto his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. He was come from God and he went to God. The Bible says God is a spirit. So he came from the spirit yes. and he went back to the spirit. Okay, can you go to Exodus chapter 33? This man was under the law, Moses.
read verse 18 through 20. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall not no man see me and live. Moses begged him to see his glory. But what he was really asking, let me see your face, Lord. And God said, you can't see my face. He's a spirit. He's a spirit. He don't want people to worship anything under the sun that is made by hands. Okay, can you go to Hebrews chapter 11? Moses begged him, let me see your face, Lord. Let me see your glory. Hebrews 11. God is an invisible God. Yes. We'll read 26 and 27. This is talking about Moses. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses begged him to see his face. God said, no, you can't see my face, Moses. But he goes on to say that Moses endured as seeing him who was invisible. He kept on walking. He kept moving forward. Right. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5 and 7, I'll just... Say we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh -huh. Our faith comes before our sight. Yeah. Our sight does not come before our faith. In one of the gospels, he told the blind man, he said, "Receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole." Mm. It's not the other way around. We have to have faith in God and it's in His Word. He gives us His Word to go by. Uh -huh. His Word is what kept me for 13 years. Uh -huh. Yes. Like the brother said, where else can I go? You have the words of eternal life right here. Uh -huh. He said, these words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Uh -huh. yes. these, this word is spirit, just like our God is spirit. Yes. He does not want us to believe on anything else but this right here. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 11 and 16. We pray, we pray for a week or two at a time on a certain situation, and we don't see nothing happening. We want to see something happening with our eyes, and our faith starts to dissipate. It starts to go down because we can't see it. But God does not want us to hope in something that we can see. All right, Second Corinthians 5 and 16. I'll go ahead and read it. He said, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. He does not want us to... I've, I've watched a movie. It's called Jesus of Nazareth. It's got a guy named Robert Powell that's playing Jesus. I've walked in the churches and seen that man's picture hanging on the wall. An actor's that proclaiming Jesus and people put that on their wall in their churches. Maybe in ignorance, but God does not want us to do that. He wants us to trust in an invisible God. Yes. Not something that we can see. We know Christ, they know Christ, they knew Christ after the flesh, but after he left, he didn't want them to believe in that flesh, that earthly flesh no more. This is the flesh, this word. 
First Peter one verses seven through nine. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. How far are you? Verse 8. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We have not seen Jesus in the flesh, but we love him. He said we don't see him. He says, do you? Now you see him not, yet believing. Mm -hmm. We still believe in the Lord, even though we don't see him. Yes. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Yes. Believing in something that we can't see. Okay, can you go to Romans chapter 8? Can we read one more verse? Go ahead. For tenth, the 10th tenth verse says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently to prophesy of the grace that should come to you. Can you read 11 and 12 too? Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And to whom it was re revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels of God look into. These prophets never seen the Lord, but they still walked on, having faith in Him. Yes, amen. Okay, Romans 8, 24 and 25. For we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Hope that is seen is not hope. If we have it in front of us, we're not going to hope for it anymore. They didn't even believe him when he was walking the earth. He said, he said to him, why do you doubt? Oh, you of little faith. Uh -huh. All the miracles they seen, all the signs that they seen, they still didn't believe. Uh -huh. My goodness. Yeah. Okay, can we go back to Hebrews? I didn't have this, but can we go back there? Hebrews 11. start at verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Go down to where it talks about Abraham, verse 8. That will start at 7 with Noah. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things, not seen as yet. He never did see it. Moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Noah built an ark. Never seen rain, he done it by faith. Yeah. <laughs> Abraham left his country when God said to leave. Mm -hmm. 
Not knowing where he went, but he went. Yes. He believed in an invisible God, not a sign in front of you, not something that he can hold. Okay, can we go to Luke chapter 24? Yes. these two. There's quite a bit. John chapter 20. I'll start at verse 11. It said, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus has lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. She seen a man, but she didn't know it was the Lord. She did not know it was the Lord. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said, said unto him, Sir, if thou would have borne him, if, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Je Jesus said unto her, Mary, and she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. What did she believe in? Did she see in, did she believe in something she could see, or was it a word from God? She said, all, she, all he said was Mary, and she believed that it was God. Yeah. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the, the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Read that scripture one more time. He said, When he, said, when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands. And his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. They had to see the Lord. They had to see his hands. They had to see his side. They were glad after they seen the Lord. He upgraded them through their unbelief because they didn't believe what she came and told them. They, Mary believed through a word. The disciples believed when they saw him. 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. This man had to feel something to believe. This woman heard the word and believed. The disciples seen the Lord and were glad. Yeah. Then this man, he said, I need to feel the Lord. I'm not going to believe unless I feel him. After eight days, again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hands, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. He gave him what he desired, to touch it, to believe. But we need to get to the point where we can hear the word of God and believe it oh, without seeing or yeah. touching anything. Amen. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are all, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. That's talking about us. We've never known the Lord after the flesh, yet we love him. We believe in him, even though we've never seen him after the flesh. He said, More, we're blessed above those who had to touch and have to see to believe. If we can just believe in his word. That's why he, that's why he sent it. He said he sent his word and healed them. Uh -huh. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Uh -huh. Amen. <laughs> Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. These are written so we can believe. I don't have this one either, but go to Romans 15 if you don't care. We get down and out. We have troubles. The Bible said through our affliction we forget to eat our bread. When we forget to eat our bread, our faith dwindles. This is why it was written to, to comfort us and to build us up. Romans 15, give me one second. Verse 4, can somebody read that? For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. This is where our hope comes from. He said if we hope for something that we see not, if we can if we see it, we're not going to hope for it anymore. He gave us his word so we can have hope until the end, until the day we die. Yes. Alright, can you go to Matthew chapter twelve? I believe in his word it's, it's the only thing that I have to lean on until I get the Holy Ghost this is what I'm leaning on it's what it's, this is what's kept me the Bible says Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? It's taking heed by taking me heed according to thy word. That's the only thing that can help us. Matthew 12, verse 39 through 41. I'll go ahead and read that too. This is my last one.
Anybody remember the story of Jonah that gets swallowed by a big fish, big whale? Do you think the people of Nineveh knew that story when he walked into the city? Do you think that they that he went in talking about how he got swallowed by a fish? Those people didn't know that. 39 through 41. He said, and I'll start at 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. They wanted to see a sign. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Verse 41 says, The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. This whole nation, over 600,000 people, repented from the word of God coming to them. They didn't have to see a man get swallowed by a well. They didn't have to see a man go down in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. They repented at the preaching of Jonas. Yeah. And God said, why, why won't I do this? These people don't even know from, they don't know their right hand from their left. Who knows if God will change his mind, like he said. We've got to believe in God's word. Nothing that we can see or touch.